Hey guys, welcome back to Pompoween. It looks super weird when I show my teeth. My eyes too. Today the new Marvel Venom movie is out, so I thought I'd celebrate. Why not? Tom Hardy. This is always a good reason to celebrate. I mean, come on. <laughs> if you're new here, welcome. And if you don't know what Pompoween is, this month I'm posting one tutorial a day for the entire month. So that means 31 Halloween makeup tutorials for you guys. So yeah, it's a big project. So it would really mean a lot if you gave it a like and maybe subscribe. I don't know, maybe? Just a thought. Just a thought. Just putting it out there. This was actually based on a body paint by an amazing artist called Yamore, and I saw this body paint of his years ago. He is a master painter, and I always looked at the picture of his Venom body painting and thought I will never, ever, ever be able to do that, but I thought I'd attempt it, and I put my own little twist to it as well, and I know it's not even half as good as his, but I gave it a shot. That's what matters. <laughs> so I hope you like it. Now let's get started. Hey there. I've gone ahead and covered my eyebrows. If you want to learn how to do that, I'm going to link it up here and down below. First, I'm starting off with white face paint. This one's by Wolf. And I'm starting by drawing the symbol on his chest. I'm just eyeballing it, trying to be as precise as I can. But you can definitely use guides to help you, like these two little dots. I wanted to make sure the legs were at the same height and same distance. So you can do things like that to help you along draw little guidelines and things like that. And the beauty of face paint is that it wipes right off if you make a mistake. And that's another reason I start with white first. I always try to start with the lightest colors because they're super easy to fix if you get anything wrong. And if you try to apply white on top of black, it'll get muddy and gray. You won't be able to get a pure, pure white. So always start with white first, except for the white that you're going to be using for detailing at the very end. But that's a whole other story. And I've switched over to a flat brush, which will help me make the straight lines a little bit better. This brush is by Makeup Forever. It's a really, really nice brush. Definitely made my life a lot easier for this body painting. It's just a very flat, very square brush. Next, I'm going in with some pink face paint by Wolf as well to start sketching in the mouth. And again, just wipe away if you make any mistakes. Here, I'm not worrying about the shape too much. You can fix it up a bit later, but I'm setting down the base design. Then I'm going with Wolf Red Face Paint, and I'm starting to shade in the gums a little bit. I'm drawing in the spaces for all the teeth because I don't want to apply white over the red that would make it turn pink. You want to have a clear base anytime you're going to be using white. And down here I'm sketching out the tongue and you can see that the red is mixing in with the white from the symbol that I drew earlier and that's totally fine because I want to have that mixture of colors on the tongue. Then I'm going in with the Mehron Paradise Paint and Mango and that's going to be my base for the teeth. I don't want them to be pure white, I want them to be a little bit more realistic so I'm going to go with a yellowish color. I am going to lighten them though later. This is just the base. Once that's done, I'm going in with red in between each tooth to kind of define them a little bit more and using some pink over that red to blend those two colors together. I'm also using the pink on the tongue to start giving it a little bit of dimension. Next with a dark brown face paint from Snazaroo, I'm going to start shading in the mouth. I'm shading mostly around the tongue and mixing it with a red to create dimension in the back of the throat. Next, I wanted to add some purple to it, so I'm using the Wolf Purple Face Paint to go over all the areas I went in with a brown. I'm also taking it in between each tooth. Next, I'm mixing the brown and the red paints to form a maroon so that I can trace all the teeth with. I'm taking it on a very small detail paintbrush. Then with a pink face paint, I'm starting to highlight the gums, but don't worry about this too much because I'm going to change them up a little bit later. I'm also adding some more highlights with the white face paint just basically tracing above each tooth. I'm also using the white to start highlighting the tongue. Here I'm just using random like squiggly strokes. It actually gives quite a nice texture. Then taking the white on a small flat brush, there's not much to it. I'm just painting the shape of the eyes on my cheeks. Now that everything is traced out, it's finally time for the black. This one is also by Wolf. And you just want to carefully trace everything and basically just fill in the blanks. <laughs> it's pretty much like a coloring book. You just have to fill in everything with black. <laughs> 
and see how the flat brush makes it super easy to make super straight lines. A really good tip when painting anything is use a brush that looks like the line you want to achieve. So if you want a straight line, use a straight brush. If you want a rounded line, use a rounded brush, and so on and so forth. Now I'm highlighting the teeth using some of that white face paint, and I'm kind of doing a dry brush effect. I'm not applying a lot of white, I just wanted to add a hint of lightness to them. I'm also going in and drawing little squiggly lines to mimic reflections on the teeth. And I don't know why I did those white lines at the tips of the teeth. I just don't at me. I don't know what that was. But anyway. <laughs> then with a the black, I'm tracing the bottom of the teeth to make sure they're really defined against the background. And by background, I just mean the mouth. And I'm also filling the mouth in a little bit with that black and the purple mixing both together to get a sort of really deep, rich color. And I didn't think the mouth was wide enough, so here I just took some of the pink and the red and changed the shape up a little bit, and some more squiggly white lines to start highlighting the tongue a little bit more, and in with a brown on a small detail brush to start shading the tongue too. Then with a black to deepen that shading a little bit. Here I'm doing, well, I'm not doing, I tried to do the bottom part of the tongue. If you check the reference photo that I used, I linked it down below, you can see that Yamori did a beautiful kind of bottom of the tongue effect, which I unfortunately wasn't able to mimic. I'm not as proficient in painting as he is, but that's what those lines were supposed to be. It was supposed to be the bottom of the tongue. Now I'm just highlighting the little bumps on the underside of the tongue and all this is is making like little squiggly lines and layering the white. It's really important to layer in a painting like this. You can see I'm going in with white again in the teeth. It's all about creating layers and dimension. And I'm also starting to draw some of the saliva, but we'll get into that a little bit more later. Now with barely any product on a flat brush, I'm shading in the eyes. And I'm not really dipping into the black. I'm making sure that there's barely any product on the brush. And I'm layering with white on top of that, so it just makes it a little bit lighter, less intense. And then layering some more black and blending it out. And I I keep doing that until I'm satisfied. Painting something like this that's supposed to be kind of realistic, it's all about the layering. So you're never just going to apply shadows once and that's it. You're going to apply shadows and then apply highlights and then more shadows and more highlights and so on and so forth. Here I've started to highlight with white once I'm done shading with the black. I'm just adding the white as intensely as I can to make sure I have little pops of highlight. Here you can see I'm just patting the brush so that I get the texture from the bristles. Then with a small detail brush, I'm just outlining the eyes. Now using the Mayron Paradise Paint in Lagoon Blue, I'm going to start adding texture to the skin. So when you want to add texture to black, you can either use white, but I thought that would match the eyes a little too much and the eyes would get a little bit lost. And I think that's why Yamori used blue as well. Again, I was following his reference. And blue is a great color to use to add dimension to black. And all I'm doing is just patting the brush and distributing the color unevenly all over. Now back to the teeth, I'm just adding a little bit more dimension to them using a dry brush effect with some black and going around the edges of the teeth. This is just darkening them up a little bit and then once again layering with some white. I'm also taking some pink and tracing the teeth on the bottom to help define them a little bit more. And I'm bringing those highlights on the inside of the mouth as well. Then I'm taking that dark maroon color and tracing some of the teeth to really define them. And adding shading to the teeth themselves as well. As you can see here, I'm having to redo my lips. I had a little dinner break. I'm sorry, this thing took me like six to seven hours to do. I had to eat in between. <laughs> so don't 
judge me. And I'm just doing the same thing I did before. I'm going in with the pink and the red and the white. I'm using the white around the edges to really highlight those gums and make them look really wet and gross and juicy. <laughs> Then I'm taking the red on a small detail brush and going in between the highlights to just deepen those areas a little bit more and give the gums a little bit more dimension. Next in, I'm going in with the Mayron Paradise paint in teal and I'm highlighting the tongue and layering white over that as well. And now some more saliva. Venom's tongue is quite large and quite wet. So we have to draw in all that saliva. And I'm also drawing saliva on the teeth and little saliva drops all over the place on the body, on the tip of the tongue, just splashing everywhere. Just, uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of drool, you guys. It's a lot of drool. And it actually gives a really cool effect when you draw the saliva from one part of the tongue to the other part of the tongue, kind of like connecting those parts with drool. I know it's super gross, but hey. Then going back in with that teal to do some more texture on the skin, just tapping it around just like I did with the dark blue. And you want to apply the color and then kind of blend it in. I never just left the color once I applied it. I always made sure to blend it out. Then at this point, I decided that my bottom half was too clean. So I wiped off a little bit with a makeup wipe and I started doing these drips. And all you have to do to achieve this is make your black face paint really wet, really saturate it with water and then really saturate your brush and then you can create these drips and it'll look really organic and it gives a really cool effect but if they're not dripping in the direction you want them to you can always draw them in and fake it a little bit and kind of guide them along I'm also drawing specks and splattering with a brush. You can tap a brush on your finger to make the paint fly everywhere. But if you're not getting the direction right, you can always just draw in all the paint specks. I ended up doing a combination of both. Just making sure there's a lot of paint splatters. I also erased some of the white symbol and then made some white drips with paint and made the ends of his little spider legs drip as well. Then I went back in with the teal to add some more texture to the skin around the symbol. I really tried to highlight my collarbone. You can definitely do some sort of like contouring and highlighting with this. I made sure to really highlight my shoulders to make me look a little bit wider. You know how he has that super wide stance. And Adam's home. And whenever I'm doing makeup and he can't kiss me, he kisses a part of bare skin, which in this case was just my back. And stay hydrated, kids. This little skull glass is my new best friend for when I'm doing face paints. If you're doing something where your mouth has makeup on it, just grab a straw and you can stay hydrated without messing up your makeup. Then I'm taking the black on a detail brush and just doing little specks around the eyes to give them a little bit more texture. Then with the NYX Jumbo Pencil in Black Bean, I'm just filling in my eyelids and under my eyes and my waterline as well. You want to make sure your eyes are super black because you want to make sure they're well hidden when you close your eyes. And I'm setting that cream base on my lids with the Void eyeshadow from the Creepy Cute palette. It's just a matte black. And of course, we can't just leave those two black splotches in the middle of our face. You need to make your eyes blend in with the rest of the skin. So just adding that blue and the teal texture as well onto the eyelids. Now, water-activated face paint does set by itself, but when using face paints like Wolf that are wax-based, if you do a lot of layers, it can look a little shiny. So I'm just going in with the RCMA translucent powder to set everything, and that's it. Your venom is complete. Now, I was experimenting a little bit with how I was gonna pose my mouth. I ended up frowning so that it would give this really cool kind of arched effect to his mouth. And I also had to tilt my head back and experiment with posing a little bit. It's a little bit hard, but once you get it, the illusion looks pretty cool. It's really weird posing with this makeup because I have to crank my neck back like that so that it widens my neck so that you see more of the mouth. So I feel kind of like a pigeon going like this. And it kind of hurts my neck. <laughs> 
took me about six to seven hours, I think. I took a break for dinner, about six to seven hours. Adam went out, went to karaoke without me. The bastard. <laughs> no, kidding. Went out, he came back, brought me Froyo. I love him. Because he just came out with pumpkin pie Froyo. So, I need that in my life. And he made it happen. So I'm very happy right now. I just like want to get this video over with so I can go eat it. So I'm going to stop talking. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to tune in tomorrow for more Pompoween. Bye.